Good afternoon, friends. We're coming close to the end of Love Stories and Wars, but we won't quite finish today. Chapter 22 Hope is Coming Once both adversaries had fallen, Hope turned to look at Alva. He was shirtless and filthy. His hair was a mess. His torso was bruised up from the kicking he had received, and there was a large burn on his right cheek, just below the eye. She ran up the stairs and threw herself into his arms. They kissed for a long time. While the rest of the room was silent, processing what had just occurred, Benel was the first to speak. He said to Tyagon, I wish Lord Hellel were here. Why is that? Tyagon asked. So I could tell him that he was right. Love stories do win wars. When at last Alva and Hope pulled apart, and Alva had set her back down on her feet, Hope said, It wasn't very nice of you to call our babies horrendous. They thought it was funny, Alva said. Besides, they were. Hope was about to respond when Tyagon cleared his throat. Oh yeah, Alva said. There are other people in the room, aren't there? Quite a few, actually, Hope said. Do you think we should pay them any attention? Oh, I guess so, Hope said. Then she and Alva turned and faced the room, both smiling. The front of Hope's dress was smudged with Alva's dirt and sweat. Alva surveyed the room. Bonson, Pryor, Benel, and Tyagon were realizing that, though the Dachmanon and his son were dead, they were surrounded by over a hundred enemy soldiers, most of whom had crossbows, and half a dozen Dachmanim were still there to lead them. You Dachmanim, Alva said. Your power is broken. Leave now. You have a few hours to decide whether you will change your paths or hide in holes till you rot. It makes very little difference to me. The Dachmanim hesitated for a moment, then turned and walked quickly out of the front gates. Next, Alva pointed to the four youngest soldiers. You, 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 and you, he said. Stay behind when the others leave. The rest of you, listen very carefully. You are the first heralds of, of some very glad tidings. Congratulations. Now go throughout the seats of the city. The, pardon me. Now go throughout the streets of the city, stopping at every door and tell everyone that Dachman is broken. The Dachmanon and his son have been defeated by a Lassanian Huron confederation. His Majesty. Tyagon the True has assumed the throne in Huron. At dawn he will walk the streets of Huron accompanied by Lord Alva Dene, Lady Hope Dene, Lord Bonson the Undefeatable, Lord Pryor the Mighty, and Lord Benel the Brave. His Majesty will announce his pleasure for the Empire. Go. All but the four designated soldiers clattered out. You four, he said, for now you have the honor of being our attendants and errand boys. We are hungry and thirsty, and I am very dirty. First, take these dead bodies out of here. For now, lay them on the outer landing and cover them. Then see to it that a hearty meal is brought to us, with water and wine to drink, and basins of water and towels for bathing. Also, see that a change of raiment is brought for each of us. Make sure the food and raiment are Huron style, not Dachmonian. Don't you dare think of running away without obeying, or risk the wrath of Alba Dene. Now be quick! He snapped his fingers and they picked up the head and body of the Dachmanon and Matarin's body with the hilt of Nira's dagger still protruding from the heart, and carried them out of the hall. I prefer Lassanian style, Alva said, turning to Tyagon with a wink. 
but that would be asking a bit much here. I hope you can think of some good things to say before dawn, brother. At this point, Bonson recovered from his shock and rushed to his father. Benel began to speak. My son! But Bonson cut him off, pulling him into an embrace. The two tall men held one another tightly as Benel wept on Bonson's shoulder, repeating, My son! My son! My son! Finally, the two pulled apart and looked one another in the eyes. Both sets of eyes were full of tears now. Benel had thought through his apology many times, but now Bonson's demeanor showed that no apology would be needed. My Lord Denae tells me that you're married. Yes, Bonson said, his chest swelling. With a baby due any day. You're going to love Sally, a father. I love her already, Benel said. Now Alva approached Bonson. I thought I told you to go lead the army. I did, Bonson said. I gave the order I thought best. I commanded Pensor to lead the army so that Pryor and I could come and help, help, help Hope bust you out. If I'd known you could escape, I probably wouldn't have bothered. But I've seen the Crondon dungeon, and you never told me you could walk through walls. My father always said, walking through walls is easy if they have a door. He would. The two both laughed and embraced. I know we all have a lot of reunion stuff to do, Pryor said suddenly, and I hate to be a party pooper by making an obvious observation. I was getting to you, Pryor, Alva said, turning to him with a smile. Sure, Pryor said, but what I mean is that we are six people in the center of an enemy army. The Doc Manim could try to rally. Your feint about us walking out the front door at dawn might buy us some time, but I wonder if we should try to figure out whether we can barricade ourselves in here until Pensor can break through the pass with the army and spring us out. Everyone seemed to follow his logic but Alva and Hope. Well, they won't feel his power, Bonson said. The, the Dachmonians might follow the Dachmanim, but I think we can get the Hurons to switch loyalties fast. We just gotta make sure they find out what has happened. That was no feint, Hope interrupted. They will obey Alva. No more blood need be shed, or at least very little. How can you be sure? Pryor asked. I can, Hope replied. Then, approaching Tyagon, she curtsied low. Your Imperial Majesty, she said, I know you will address the city at dawn, but may I give a message to your empire now? I'm not sure I have the right to command you, he said. Huron is your empire now, Hope replied. I'm a Danae. We're not rulers. Very well, Tyagon said. You have my consent. But a message to the entire empire? And beyond. Just when I think I've seen it all, Tyagon said, this I must see. The entire party walked out the front gates and stood on the landing, looking westward. Hope and Alva were in the center, with Tyagon and Pryor on Alva's right and Bonson and Benel on Hope's left. Hope raised her hands, and a bright light emanated from her. It lighted the way in front of her, but this was different than any light her companions had seen before. It was not blinding, but it lit up the world before her in warm, white light, and there were no shadows. The light penetrated walls, walls roofs, mountains, and caves, so that it encompassed everyone and everything, filling the land with warmth and joy all the way to the heart of Dachman and beyond. While shining thus, Hope began to sing in the High Lassanian, but the song was heard as far as the light reached, and everyone understood it in their own tongue. 
Don't be afraid. Hope is coming. Darkness is past and the dawn has come. Don't be afraid. Hope is coming. Evil's rule is over and done. Live in the light and the light will live in you. Run not from the light, for it makes all things new. The land will be cleansed, all slaves will be free. The cripples will dance and the sightless will see. All that love the light will blossom and bloom. All that hate the light will now find their doom. Don't be afraid, hope is coming. When she had finished singing, the light subsided and Hope turned and walked back into the hall. The others stood still for some time, still staring out into the west in a euphoric daze. Silently they turned one by one and re-entered the hall to join her. Well, my love, Alva said, apparently we have another journey ahead of us. We certainly do, she replied. Chapter 23, The Emperor's Decree. The room remained in silence for another half hour. Then Tyagon spoke to Alva. You really didn't ask if I was interested in being the Emperor of Huron. No, I didn't. But as far as we know, your brother has been murdered. Should we find this to be false, you may give him the throne if you wish. I would think it would be better for both Lassania and Huron to live under the rule of Lord and Lady Danae. I have not spoken to Phylon of this, of course, but I believe he would agree. Then you would be wrong, Alva said. That is not what Danae's or Luminaries are for. Divon the Great was neither. Neither was the strong arm. The right thing is for both kingdoms to live in the light and for Huron to embrace once again the kingdom principles of Divon the Great. The Danaes are defenders and the luminaries are light givers. I believe our children will be both, but they are not rulers. If Alsala Danae would not challenge Philon III, his son will not receive rule from Philon IV, however willingly given. As for Tyagon, the true, no man could be more fit to rule his people. Then Phylon and I will work together, as we always have, for the mutual good of our people, Tyagon said. And now, this love and friendship will extend far beyond the Camden Mountains. Good, Alva said. And what will you do now? Tyagon asked. Hope? Alva asked. We must go on a journey for the healing of the lands that have been polluted by Dachman, Hope said. I promised them that I was coming. Yes, I suppose you did. Tyagon replied, Much of that land is part of the Huron Empire, or was. May I come with you? Who will rule here while you're gone? Alva asked. I'm sure a proper steward can be found to manage the city until our return, Tyagon replied. Well, his majesty may do as he wishes in his own empire, so long as he follows the light, Alva said. And of course, it would be wonderful to have you join us, Hope added. We will need some weeks to set things right here, Tyagon said. Can your departure wait that long? It can, Hope said. Excellent. And now, since my Lord Danae has given me an important appointment at dawn, I must retire into a corner and try to think of something to say. Finally, the Dachmonian Aaron boys came back with the required items. They had cooks with them, Huron cooks who had been glad to serve someone other than the Dachmanon. The cooks brought in long tables and began to set a feast as the six companions washed and changed. Hope used the cleaning closet for this purpose, while the others simply used the hall. All wore the clothes of Huron royalty except Prior, who had to settle for the uniform of an Abyssarian giant, much to the amusement of Alva and Bonson. Do you know why you have to wear that uniform? 
Fonson asked. Why is that? Pryor asked in mock entrance as hope interest as hope began to roll her eyes. You're big, Fonson said. He and Pryor laughed while Hope sighed in exasperation. There has to be a story here, Alva said. Yes, Hope said, and if they tell it to you, I will kill them. The last thing I need is for you to be in on this. Oh, come on, Pryor said. We gotta tell him the story of Bonson almost drowning and you getting thrown across the river. Okay, okay, Hope said with frustrated resignation. The Huron cooks had made them roast pheasant, lamb stew, fresh rolls, and a large salad. They had also brought cold water and red wine. The group ate their meal, and stories were told by all, informing Alva, Tyagon, and Benel of all that had occurred since Alva's capture, leading to the journey under the mountains. And of course, Alva told them of all that had happened to him. After dinner, Tyagon retired to his corner for further thought, but Benel had many questions for the others about what had happened in the war since he left Lassania. After dinner, there were still a few hours before dawn. Maybe we ought to get a little sleep, Alva said. I should have told them to bring mattresses. No matter, Bonson said, but someone will have to keep watch and make sure we all rise in time since I think we are all very tired. I think I can handle that. That won't be necessary, Tyagon said from the corner. I shall not sleep. You and my father must be the most worn out of all of us, Bonson said. Yes, but Lady's Hope's Lady Hope's presence has given me new life, and I still have much to consider. What he said was true. Tyagon and Benel still looked emaciated, but the black circles under their eyes were gone, and both seemed surprisingly energetic and animated, considering they had had very little to eat for months. Sounds good, your majesty, Bonson replied. The other five found spots on the marble floor and, using seat cushions for pillows, fell asleep rather quickly. Rather than use a pillow, Hope lay across Alva with her head on his chest. Remember the night we were in that rainstorm on the plateau? she asked. How could I forget? I wished we could sleep like this then, she said with a musical sounding yawn. Oh, you little rebel, Alva said as they nodded off. An hour before dawn, Tyagon ordered the errand boys to, fre to bring fresh basins of water and the things needed to get ready for the day. He then woke the group. Some nibbled on leftovers from dinner while waking up. When the errand boys returned, they washed up and prepared for the walk through town. As they were getting ready, Bonson brought Hope her sword, which she had never picked up when Matarin had knocked it from her hand and the sword belt, which she had left with her discarded clothes the night before. I don't want that, Hope said. You don't? Alva asked. Don't get me wrong, Hope said. It was a gift you made me, and I will always treasure it. But before last night, I had helped win many battles, but I had never killed a man by my own hand. Several times I came close to sword battle, but it never came about. What had to be done had to be done, but for me, one is enough. I won't wear a sword anymore, and I won't need it now. You never know, Alva said. I know, Hope replied. Pity, Alva said. The way you were going, you would have been better than Bonson and I soon enough. I know that's not true, Hope said but it doesn't matter now anyway. I'm pretty good at a few other things and I want to focus on those. Whatever you want, Alva said, but just so you know, I'm still wearing my sword. Of course, Hope said with a smile, and I'm still wearing my arms and legs. What should I do with it? Bonson asked. Put it aside for now, Hope said. I'll give it to our first daughter when she's old enough. 
Sounds good, Alva said. Speaking of her, we better see about her showing up. Why do you think I came to get you? Hope asked. Do you too mind saving that conversation for a time when I am, you know, somewhere else? Pryor asked. When did you get so rosy cheeked, brother? Alva asked him. Oh, right around the time your wife started composing songs about how little sleep you get. Alva raised his eyebrows in surprise, and Hope shrugged and smiled. It's time, Tyagon said. Lord Pryor, may I ask a favor? Of course, Pryor said. While you were sleeping, I sent my errand boys for parchment and quill, and wrote out a decree. As we walk through town, I shall need your mighty voice to read it for the crowds. He handed Pryor the parchment, which he quickly perused. Do you think we should have someone carry the Dachmanon's head in front of us on a pole to show he's dead? Bonson asked. No, Hope said. That is the Dachmonian way. That's not our way. Don't be afraid. We won't, Bonson said. You're with us. We are with you, she said, taking Alva's hand. Like you said, Alva said to Bonson. She's with us. They walked down the wide staircase with Tyagon and Hope in the center, Hope glowing sweetly and majestically. Alva was on Hope's left, holding her hand, and Pryor was on Alva's left. On Tyagon's right were Benel and Bonson. When they reached the street and began walking down the main thoroughfare leading away from the palace, Pryor began to read Tyagon's degree in a loud, booming voice. The words of Tyagon, son of Diophon the Conqueror, heir of Teraphon the Wise, and descendant of Lord Huron the Strongarm. The darkness has passed. The light has dawned. The Empire of Dachman has been defeated by a confederation of Lassanian and Huron warriors. The Dachmanon and his son are dead. The Empire of Huron has been restored and pledges eternal peace with the Kingdom of Lassania. Dachman is now a Huron tributary. After hundreds of season changes, Huron will return to living by the writings of our Lassanian ancestor, Divon the Great. This will be our rule of law. All kingdoms that were forcibly conquered by Huron will be given a choice of independence or continuing as citizens of the Huron Empire. All kingdoms that were conquered by Dachman will have the same choice, but Dachman itself will continue under Huron rule. For any kingdom that seeks independence, they will have Huron friendship so long as they never take up arms against Huron, Lassania, or any other nation without a just cause. As regards the horrors of the war that is now ended, enough blood has been shed. All crimes are pardoned. Those who choose to follow the light will receive forgiveness and a new beginning. Any who reject the light will be burned up in its brilliance. The eternal friendship of Lassania and Huron will be a stone of safety and security for those who seek its aid. But for those who seek evil, it will be a stone that shatters them. I have spoken. Not bad, your majesty, Alva said after the first reading. Yes, Tyagon said. I took the liberty of assuming that Phylon will fully support me. But our friendship is such that I do believe he will. There are an eternal number of specifics that will need to be worked out, of course, but that is the essence of what I believe must be done. Pryor read the decree again and again as they walked around the city. At noontime, at Tyagon's command, they were brought a mill in the city square, which was near the palace. They had covered the major streets of the city, and Tyagon thought it was enough. Now, Tyagon said, after lunch, I am going to return to the palace for a long sleep. I will do that as well, Benel said. I did sleep, but far too little. We'll see you there, Alva said. That's not necessary, 
Tyagon said. It's only a short walk. Yes, but we want to make sure you are safe. Huron guards have already begun to take places in the palace, Tyagon said. All Dachmonians save our errand boys left after they heard the Dachmanon was dead. Besides, I have no reason to be afraid now that hope has come to Huron, and I won't be alone. I have Benel the Brave with me. That seems a bit much, Benel said. You are one of only three people in history to escape the Crondon dungeon, Pryor said, and you did it right under the Dachmanon's nose and risk risked his heavy wrath. And by doing that, you helped Alva Dene kill him. You participated in the final act that won the most important war in history. How many people can say that, my lord? Two, by my count, Hope said. Benel did not know what to say, so he bowed embarrassedly, and he and Tyagon made their departure.